What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are going to be looking at Pilot Edge once again and we're going to be going for more of an informational video. We're going to be looking at Class D airspace and how to operate in it when you're on the Pilot Edge network. To do that we're going to be taking a quick little hop from the Santa Maria Public Airport to the San Luis County Regional Airport in California. The first thing however we are going to want to do is define what Class D airspace is. To that we're going to go to the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge and we're going to see that Class D airspace is airspace surrounding those airports that have an operational control tower. What that means is you're going to have some sort of weather information service such as an automatic terminal information service. You're going to have some sort of ground control and you're going to have a tower frequency. You're not going to have a clearance frequency at a Class D airport. To confirm this, we'll head over to airnav.com and plug in the identifier for Santa Maria. Scrolling down to the airport diagram and downloading the PDF, you can see that there are in fact just those three frequencies for this airport. However, knowing what Class D airspace is, is only useful if we know how to identify a Class D airport. The best way to do that is to go back to AirNav and take a look at the VFR map. Once again, we plug in the airport identifier, and we'll scroll down and on the right we will see a section that says sectional chart. You can use a real sectional chart if you have one, but if you do not yet, you can use this online one. And you see that the segmented blue line, the dashed blue line, is what identifies a class D airport. We also see that our destination airport has the exact same type of circle, which means that is also a class D airport. Now that we know a little more about what Class D airspace is, we're going to talk about what you need to do in order to leave Class D airspace. According to the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, a pilot departing from a Class D airport must establish and maintain two-way radio communication with the control tower and thereafter is instructed by ATC. Essentially what this means is you need to be talking to somebody. You are in controlled airspace and someone is going to be telling you a lot of what to do. When you're departing from Class D, the first steps of contacting air traffic control happen when you're on the ground. The first thing you're going to want to do is get the weather information. This is typically done by looking at the ATIS. And remember, you find all of your frequencies using that diagram we downloaded from AirNav. Please note that because it's a sim, pilots can choose their own weather. Therefore, the ATIS frequencies will often not have any recording on them. Next, we're going to talk to ground control. And the key to talking to ground is remembering the four W's. Who you're calling, who you are, where you are, and what you want. From them, you'll get a taxi clearance that says where you need to go and how you can get there. You'll also get any instructions regarding runways that you may be passing on your route. You need to read back the entire clearance, paying particular attention to anything regarding runways you may be crossing or holding short of. Additionally, you need to monitor the ground frequency throughout your entire taxi, unless told otherwise. Let's take a look at how I can contact Santa Maria Ground when I'm sitting at the terminal. Santa Maria Ground, Skyhawk 30906 Bravo, uh, ready for taxi to active from the terminal. Number 30906 Bravo, Santa, Louis, correction, Santa Maria Tower, Santa Maria Ground, runway 30, taxi via Alpha. 30 via Alpha, Santa Maria, uh, this is 30906 Bravo. After that, we're able to do our assigned route to our assigned destination. Of course, we keep open ears in case anything changes and the controller would like us to taxi on a different route. It's important to note that we are not cleared onto the runway yet. We'll need to contact Tower to do that. And once we arrive at the runway, we'll go ahead and contact Tower. Tower will give you some instruction to do with the runway. It could be hold short of the runway, line up and wait on the runway, or they could give you a clearance to take off from the runway. The important thing is to read it back and to correctly comply with it. If you receive a takeoff clearance, you'll also receive some sort of vector, which means they'll give you some sort of heading to fly. Often you'll hear fly runway heading, but they may give you any particular heading that they want that you have to comply with after you depart. Let's listen now to what they gave me after I contacted them. Santa Maria Tower, Skyhawk 30906 Bravo, holding short 30 at Alpha 8, ready for departure for a north departure. Number 30906 Bravo, north departure for runway 30, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff 30, north departure approved, 30906 Bravo. After hearing that, we are cleared onto the runway and cleared to take off. All we have to do is follow those instructions and we are good to go. Because we were cleared for the north departure, we knew it was okay to turn out to the north when we found ourselves at a safe altitude to do so. 
Of course, we were listening to the tower frequency, making sure that they weren't trying to call us and give us any additional instructions. I like to use a third-party app to check my location of my flight, and once I saw I was clear of the airspace, I called them up and simply said I was clear, and they said I could then change the frequency to any other frequency I want. Santa Maria Tower, Skyhawk 3096 Bravo is clear of your airspace to the north. Skyhawk 3096 Bravo, frequency change approved. Frequency change approved, thanks so much, 3096 Bravo.